All right, Alex, Steve here. Um, I wanted to show you a couple things with GNU Radio um, that I've been doing, and also just basically how to set up that signal source we were talking about here the other day. Uh, I know you were interested in generating some sample signals um, and saving them into streams and then later playing them back or looking at them or analyzing them. So I figured I'd give you a little bit of a head start here with uh, GNU Radio. So this is the simple graph I just put together a couple minutes ago. Uh, and it's consisting of a couple different things. Uh, there's a signal source. Um, you can find it here on the side. Uh, looking through this whole thing can be a little bit tricky, so you could actually click the search icon and then say things like uh, signal source. It's under waveform generator, so you could either double click on it or drag and drop it, and then double click on it to configure it. Uh, by default, it's using the cosine. We could use sine, square, triangle, saw wave, all these different sorts of things. Um, let me just delete that one. We've already got one in our block. So um, I told it to use the frequency signal frequency. Um, that's actually controlled by a GUI variable slider that will appear. And I've got that variable set up to go from negative 1 million to positive 1 million in 1 kilohertz steps and given it a default value of uh, 1, 1 kilohertz. I've also thrown in a fast Gaussian noise source here. Uh, and set the scale to 0 0.0125, so it's not too powerful. Um, I add both of these signal sources together with an add block. Uh, you could find that here on the side. There it is, add. Um, we're going to take a look at basic FFT display. Uh, I've told it to use center frequency variables. The center frequency, we've got it defined as 500 megahertz. Uh, we've got the sample rate defined as five uh, mega samples per second. Um, most of this is self-explanatory. Uh, and then finally, I'm telling all the data to also flow into uh, my Osmocom sync block. So I'm basically piping the output into this siggen.qvrt file sitting inside my home directory. The qvrt equals zero is telling it to go to tuner stream A. If I were to put one, it would be tuner stream B and so on. Uh, inside here, a couple other things configured. I set the sample rate, I set the center frequency, and then the bandwidth is also equal to the sample rate. So that's really the only things you need to set inside here when you're setting up a file to record. So then basically this whole thing's built. Um, we're just gonna compile the Python, uh, execute it, and immediately you could see the generated signal. We could move the signal back and forth um, to a couple different frequencies. Uh, let's see, a weird thing happens. I set it to zero there. We'll see that inside the QBRT file later. So basically, I'm um, just moving it back and forth. That's enough for now. So we've just basically written a file, uh, and it's going to appear, yep, right down here. No, where is it? Siggen. There it is. Siggen.qbrt, 1.5 gigabytes. Uh, just generated it. We're going to take a look at that now inside Analyst. So I'm going to launch Analyst, maximize it. Uh, we'll go to the correct directory. We will load it up. Now, the first thing that happens when uh, Analyst sees a new file is it's got to build a file index for it. So we didn't actually play it for 76 seconds, but there was no throttle control uh, inside the QVRT flow graph. So it was just basically adding data as fast as it could. Uh, you could see it to set at um, five megahertz bandwidth, 500 megahertz center frequency, five mega samples per second. Um, see, that's the only stream inside here. We're going to click OK. It's going to briefly build a file index and then just load up the file for us to kind of pan, scroll, and zoom around in. So after a couple seconds here, you can see that I'm going to start moving the center frequency back and forth. Let me just change the time and the frequency scaling a little bit. All right. So like I mentioned before, that QR or that uh, GRC flow graph, the GNU radio graph, was actually uh, dumping data into the file as fast as possible. So you can see this is where we were moving that GUI slider back and forth. Um, there's some interesting harmonics that happen, uh, things that are going on mathematically. The signal's kind of being reflected. Um, so as I cross the zero barrier again here, you'll see something weird. Hold on. Let me see if I could find that. I actually set it there for a second. 
right there. Yep. All right. So I just basically wanted to give you uh, an overview on how to generate a GRC flow graph uh, with some data and output that into a QBRT file. So I think this is enough to kind of get you started with um, some of the things that you wanted to do. All right. I will talk with you later. Bye.